that the persons on, of the consulate, the, uh, they saw uh, that you make pictures of. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you want an idea of what a Spiegelbeld provocatie is at the moment, the, uh, the Americans in the consulate have now called the police on me for making a documentary about the American consulate calling the police. So, uh, but these guys are very nice. In this quaint, leafy graveyard in the south of Amsterdam lies the grave of a mass murderer, a colonial tyrant who ruled with an iron fist as the governor general of the Dutch East Indies. Van Hoyt, otherwise known as the Butcher of Ake. <laughs> His grave stands silently as a small testament to the evils of greed and the madness of man. But in 1935, the city of Amsterdam saw fit to give the brutal commander who oversaw the murder of 22,000 indigenous Indonesians a monument, as well as this, in recognition of his victories for the Dutch colonial project. And in the mid-60s, the monument became a central point in the counterculture's fight back against imperialism. This is chapter 9 of the Shite Guide to Provo. There goes the neighborhood, here come the provos. Working for the man is a no no. Staying on the low low, playing with the popo. When you're with the crew, you're never gonna roll so low. There goes the neighborhood, here come the provos. Trying to give the world back its mojo. The people with no hope need to go loco. Here come the provos to fuck up the whole show. When I first began making this series, I was having some trouble trying to empathize with the zeitgeist of the mid 60s and the existential dread of living through the cold war and the constant threat of the atomic bomb which was the the driving force behind the whirlwind of global social evolution throughout the 60s that is until a cheeky bollocks called Vladimir Putin invaded Europe and once again reawakened the specter of nuclear annihilation from its temporary slumber So for this chapter, we're going to investigate the parallels between now and then and learn about a different imperial superpower whose incessant warmongering uh, brought us to the brink of nuclear winter and global holocaust. And if we've learned anything about the provost so far, it's that fighting against extinction doesn't have to be boring. It can also be fucking hilarious. <laughs> By now, we've all seen the reports coming out of Moscow of the brave Russian citizens who dared to stand up to their nation's colonial ambitions by protesting with blank pieces of paper, only to get arrested. Imagine not being able to criticize your government for their actions. We can all agree that that kind of crazy shit wouldn't happen in a Western country, right? <laughs> Full time provo, don't act like you don't know. Proto homo ludens, I got hair with the body and bones of Han Solo. The police repression against the provos reached its highest peak when they began protesting in earnest against the colonialist depravity such as the American War of Aggression in Vietnam. Now, the Dutch government held power over any dissenters by utilizing a repressive law called Les Majeste, whereby basically it was illegal to insult people like the, the king or the queen, but also the heads of friendly states. So, with this kind of law, Les Majeste, one might also argue 
that the US was not being very friendly to the innocent people of Vietnam that were being slaughtered in their hundreds of thousands. I was born and they gave me a gun. We've been at war since the tale was first spun. To ensure we remain number one, they sent me away to the fray in the front. They told me what had to be done. Obey, be bold, hit the button and run. Leave the heat of a hundred suns, cause the people below me are nothing but scum. They told me that it would be fun. The engine was humming, my body was numb. Once before I was somebody's Son, now the villain has come and the villagers run It fell from the bay with a shove Hellfire from the heavens above I escape in my big metal dog Far away from the pain and the screams of the blood of the ball When the enemy's weaponry Puts our empire in jeopardy If you threaten our hegemony You will get sent to the cemetery Yes, I'm the ball And I am not an invader I'm just the jaded crusader Burn it all acre by acre We shoot first and ask questions later So Hans Metz, a provo from the get-go had the spicy idea to protest the law against protesting by bringing blank posters and sheets to the streets The police were getting humiliated at regular intervals and thus they increased their fight against these clowns. Now you look like a dishevelled sort of cinema commissioner. I mean, what are you trying to do? Are you trying to shock the Dutch? The well, Dutch no, bourgeois? you see, it's like this. Uh, I'm, I'm just looking like a silly donkey. Just the same as, as uh, well, our prime minister looks when he has an official opening of something. I know provers are meant to provoke people, but what do you stand for? What do you believe in? A provo is somebody who wants to be a warning. They are... A warning for what? A warning for this society. Look around you. I mean, what, what have we reached? We found out an atomic bomb. Hans Townman was arrested on April the 1st, 1966 on the charge of inciting sedition by handing out Provo leaflets at a protest. He was released five days later on the condition that he didn't join any more demonstrations. <laughs> I promise. Three weeks later, Ole Hans was back in court for the terrible crime of walking around a protest, whispering the word image. He was locked up for three months. Such was the life of a full-time provo. On May the 5th, the Dutch holiday of Liberation Day, when the country celebrates the end of the Nazi occupation, another group, the Vietnam Action Group, marched against a different genocidal power and descended on the American consulate here on Museum Plain. Hundreds of people were arrested, windows were broken, scraps with the police, the whole shebang. And they also marched every Saturday night from the Spo to the prison on the street Amstelveenseweg to demand the release of Hans Townman. You know by now that the provost didn't do anything half-arsed. And if they were going to attack the state, it had to be with a sense of hilarious irony that was central to the movement. For instance, Bernard de Vries was arrested trying to free Hans Townman from jail. He was found breaking into the jail with a rope and a firecracker. He was also carrying a map of Spain. These lads were trolling the cops 30 years before the internet even existed. It was just a week after Bernard had won a seat in the city elections. Just because the electorate had accepted them into the political fold didn't mean the authorities had. Hans didn't waste his time in the clink. And while he was inside, he wrote a book which has since become somewhat of a, a cult classic from the time. And along with Rule Van Down's The White Danger, Het Witte Gevaar, it became um, you know, one of the primary sources for this series. And if you want to get a feel for the madness of the time, you can try and pick up uh, a copy of the book that Hans wrote while he was in prison. And its title, <laughs> well, that's obvious. Full Time Provo. Full time provo, don't act like you don't know, don't act like you don't know, you gotta act like a provo. You can 
you catch me packing the plate I hit the dam on my bike I met my comrades at a happening on Saturday night We're gonna paint the town white We set the statue alight The violent pigs up on the horses came and started a fight The agents raided my house They told me stay on the couch I told them get the fuck out They punched me straight in the mouth My neighbors were complaining Saying that I'm much too low I just say get ready for the shock We got the mushroom clown Dark days, there's no walking away You better pray for no mistakes in the atomic age My parents told me take a chill and have a holiday I can't escape apocalyptic visions of atomic rain Every leader is a Nero, they got power, ego, black tuxedo, real greedo, we got Nido. If you have got no amigos, no libido, big torpedo, Hitler, Stalin, Truman, Churchill, Mussolini, Hirohito. Full time provo, don't act like you don't know, proto homo, Lugans, I got hair with the body and bones of Han Solo. Full time provo, don't act like you don't know, don't act like you don't know, don't know, act like a provo. Full time provo, don't act like you don't know, pro so homo ludens, I got hair with the body and bumps of Han Solo Full time provo, don't act like you don't know Don't act like you don't know, you gotta act like a provo <laughs> The persons on, of the consulate, the, uh, they saw uh, that you make pictures of yeah, yeah. The consulate, is that correct? Yeah, yeah. Can I see an uh, ID card or a passport or something? Uh, yeah, sure. Man. Okay. Just checking uh, something. It's all good, man. It's America. Cheers, lads. Talk it out. Bye, dog. So today, much like then, you can't really hang around the uh, the American consulate. But the story goes on. Four cops. As a full-time provo, Hans could only have used the proceeds from his book to do some cool provo shit. He spent the, uh, the profits buying a fucking boat, a houseboat that stood before right here. A houseboat to be used exclusively to do cool provo shit. And it was situated right in, uh, in the canal here in the heart of Amsterdam. Boats. Do you like boats? Cause I like boats There's a load of provos on the provo boat Do you wanna get low? I'm smoking a toke on the provo boat So as 1965 moved on to 66 and 67 The protests, happenings and shenanigans Continued with ever increasing ludicrousness Because the world was becoming more ludicrous And it had become clear at this stage That the lessons of World War II Were to be discarded by the governments of the world And colonialism was here to stay Ever since the beginning of history Some men were born to spread horror and misery Under the banner of liberty You can forget all your hopes of civility Notions of chivalry On a mission of trickery Burn down the forest and poison the fishery Listening to tyranny, sickening symphony How about suck a knife fucking artillery? Napalm in the fist of the dynasty Flying through the mist with a special delivery Viciously eviscerating your children to smithereens and killing every innocent that lives in the vicinity listen it isn't a mystery we'll god on our side we will fly to infinity just another day that we'll live on in infamy you're marching for peace but we're marching to victory Bomb. when the enemy's weaponry Bomb. what's our empire in jeopardy Bomb. if you threaten our hegemony you will get sent to the cemetery yes i'm the Bomb. and i am not an invader Bomb. I'm just a jaded crusader Burn it all acre by acre We shoot first and ask questions later When the enemy's weaponry What's our empire in jeopardy? If you threaten our hegemony You will get sent to the cemetery Yes, I'm the bomb And I am not an invader I'm just a jaded crusader Burn it all acre by acre We shoot first and ask questions later 
The Saturday night happenings around the Leafurcher statue continued with ever increasing ferocity until a lad by the name of Carol Kennelmans, the sculptor of the statue, complained about the constant defacing of his artwork and he suggested that the protest would be more appropriate at another site, the monument to Dutch colonial brutality, the Van Hoyts Monument. The provost agreed and at the next Saturday night gathering, hundreds of space invaders marched from the spow down to their new target. And they came here to the Van Hoyts Monument, a testimony of man's inhumanity to man. So if you've been watching the, the series up until now, you'll know that the provosts were decades ahead of their time. And the issues they were facing back in the mid 60s have all kind of come around again and hit us, you know, hit us square in the face like some kind of fucking furious boomerang. It's all happening again. Spiegelwelt Provocati after Spiegelwelt Provocati. So the first Saturday that they came down here, they began with their usual speeches, uh, both equally rousing and ludicrous. And when they were finished with the speeches, they doused the statue in their trademark white paint. Then the police came in and they played their part also by assaulting the painters, as you, as you might imagine. Picture the scene. The bougie neighborhood of South Amsterdam is roused from its deep and comfortable sleep by a bunch of fucking hippies dancing around and defacing a statue, de defacing a national monument of a national hero who helped liberate all that innocent money from the Dutch East Indies. Utterly shameless. Next Saturday night, they were at it again, and hundreds more provosts marched from the spow back to the, the murder monument. The local residents uh, were not putting up with this, this, this indecorous tomfoolery, and the upper class's bodyguards were called. The police came back to crack some skulls. Peter Bronkhorst and Auke Boersma climbed up atop the monument, acting the absolute maggot, and they refused to come down for the police. So the cops swung their batons. They dispersed the crowds and the two lads were arrested. The happenings then kind of moved on from this location, but the message was sent. Recent years on our insane planet have seen a resurgence in the toppling of former idols. Back in 1966, just like now, a false image could not stand unopposed. As it happens, after the monument had been marked by the provost as a glaring symbol of imperial horror, it was eventually blown up by another group active in the city. But it was repaired and years later, the offending symbols related to Van Hoyts were removed by the city, which rebranded the monument as a token of friendship. Statues may be built of stone and metal, but everything eventually turns to rust and dust. Nothing escapes entropy. It's only the ethereal that survives, only the hope of a, a better tomorrow that lasts forever. And movements like Provo can disband and their memories fade and their members die off, but the sparks remain, forever ready to light new fires. Unless, of course, the imperial powers of today kill us all in the inevitable nuclear fire and the following nuclear winter. So long, Mom, I'm off to drop the bomb, so don't wait up for me. But while you swelter down there in your shelter, you can see me on your TV while we're attacking frontally. Watch Brinkley and Huntley describing contrapuntally the cities we have lost. No need for you to miss a minute of the agonizing Holocaust. Yeah! Little Johnny Jones 
he was a U.S. pilot and no shrinking violet, was he? He was mighty proud when World War III was declared. He wasn't scared, no siree. And this is what he said on his way to Armageddon. So long, Mom. I'm off to drop the bomb, so don't wait up for me. But though I may roam, I'll come back to my home. Although it may be a pile of debris. Remember, Mommy, I'm off to get a commie. So send me a salami and try to smile somehow. I'll look for you when the war is over. An hour and a half from now.